Hey, and welcome back to the channel. So today I have these two puzzles here. Now, they're based off of puzzles I saw online, uh, but I came up with a way to 3D print um, and design them in a way so that they were functional. Um, and uh, they both work the same in principle, uh, but this one is a little more challenging that it asks you to do two different tasks. So we're going to look first at the one here in red. And so, um, let's examine this puzzle. So if we look at it in some detail, we'll notice that it's a triangular box. Okay, a triangular box has these two metal bars, one on either side. Uh, one bar has a little bit of free play to it, the other bar not so much. And then you'll notice the things stuck inside appear to be stuck. Um, there's a hole here in the bottom where they fit in. The bo uh, fit in. And so the challenge with this particular puzzle is to remove each object inside, each of these um, long threaded rods or screws. Um, each one's an eighth of an inch, thereabouts. Um, remove them from the puzzle box using two different methods. So the first inclination is to play with them and see if you can get one out. And then um, one is possible to get out that way. And then there uh, comes the conundrum of how to get the second one out using a different method or approach. So before I move forward, I'm going to throw up this disclaimer right here. Stop the video now if you do not want to see the solution, because I'm going to show you the solution right now. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove one of these rods. So if you look at them carefully, one is um, a screw or a bolt uh, with a top here. That one we cannot remove um, using just uh, manipulating the uh, wing nut here or the nut at the bottom. But this other one we can. There's going to be enough free play at the top. This is actually just a threaded rod. But a couple of things you notice is they're catching here at the bottom. So the first thing we're going to want to do is move this one nut up higher and get it out of the way. Okay, it doesn't have to go all the way up, but it's just enough so that we get more free play here. And we can see that we're getting pretty close to getting this one out. So what we're going to have to do is play a little bit with this wing nut. Now, first inclination might be to move it up and try and lift it off. That's just not going to be possible. So what we've got to do is screw it down enough so that we don't run into this bar, but that we get enough uh, space that we can get this up in a corner. If we can get that up in a corner, just like that, what happens down here at the bottom is it frees it, and see how I'm already out? So all I've got to do now is just let it fall out. And there is our first part out. So that's the first method. Now the second way of getting this out is going to be a little more tricky. Um, you have to pretty much know what's going on and what's happening inside here. So remember, if you go back to these bars, one bar had no free play. This other bar had quite a bit of free play to it. So you have to kind of think about what's, what's, what's going on with that. Why is that one different? So this trick here is knowing that there is a vertical bar right here held by a magnet. And there's a void down below here. So if we were to slap this down hard enough on a surface, you can either use the palm of your hand, uh, the wood of this desk here, your knee, um, we should be able to make that bar fall from the magnet, causing enough free play to get this out. So the way this is going to work, so I'm going to slap this down and see if this works. There we go. First time. That's great. See, now I can slide it over. There's enough free play of this still to then pull it off to the side, which lifts that piece completely out. And now this piece comes out, no problem. I'll set that off to the side and show you kind of what it looks like inside. So there is where a hole is. If I were to rotate it up, listen, there's that click. And now there is a metal bar stuck inside. And again, if we slap this down, the metal bar goes down. And we're able to slide this back in. And we could seal it up if we so chose. So I'm going to go back to our two pieces here, and you'll see that they're the same length. Um, they're three inches long. So if I put them side by side, you can see that. They're three inches long. Um, and so to put them back in, we want to put this wing nut back up, 
uh, bring this nut back down so that we can kind of pin this down. We can bring this wing nut up a little bit. Um, and then we'll put them back into the puzzle to essentially reset the puzzle, right? There. So our puzzle is once again reset as we found it. And then we're going to take our metal bar, make sure that that piece of metal is down in that hole, slide it in halfway. We can slide it back across and we just rotate it upside down. Listen. There we go. Clicks back in place. Everything is locked back in place. Okay, so there is that version of the puzzle. Now this one seems to be a, a much more impossible uh, scenario. How on earth did we get this spark plug stuck inside of this box? And all, any way you look at it, there's just no way to figure, think about it. You, know, you can't move any of the pieces of the spark plug. Um, the top of the spark plug, or I guess the, the uh, where the spark comes from here, this little cap, it's not going to bend. I mean, that's just solid. Um, I don't know if that's steel or aluminum there, but it's solid. So it all comes back to what we saw with the red one, which is if you feel the bars, this bar is tight, this bar is a little loose, so it has the exact same mechanism. There is a second vertical bar here held together by a magnet, so if we were to slam it down, it should free this up. Let's see if I do it on the table. There we go. Okay. Slam it down on my knee. Bar comes out. We can get this out. And it's the same principle here. There's the bar in that side, in that, side of that hole. Um, you flip it upside down, that bar comes back up, locks itself in place with the magnet. And so we can simply just slide this in, lock it into place like so, rotate it. There's a click. We're locked back in place, and our impossible object is once again stuck inside. Well, those are our two puzzles. Uh, I have uh, descriptions of how to print the puzzles on Thingiverse and other websites that uh, for 3D printing, showing exactly the steps needed to uh, print them, and also the materials needed to get these these metal rods in there. They're essentially two millimeter rods with a two millimeter vertical rod. Uh, each rod on the outside here is about 35 millimeters in length. The rod inside is about 5 millimeters with a 3 millimeter by 1 millimeter circular magnet um, that's embedded inside there. So that's kind of the trick behind these puzzles. I hope you enjoy watching these puzzles and other content that I have. Please like and subscribe to this video. Thank you so much.